what would the ideal candidate, you know, show up with? Hopefully a ladder. <laughs> in this video, you'll hear from industry veterans about what IA firms are looking for in applicants and the best way to get work as an IA, starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. This video is sponsored by Kaplik. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. Download the free guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by the IA firm CCMS and Associates. To apply to this fast-growing and innovative firm, email your resume and a compelling cover letter to careers at ccmsclaims.com. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. It's one of the biggest things that you can do to help Adjuster TV. And you either love bacon or you're wrong. As an independent adjuster, you're going to be faced with the dilemma of either working for just one firm or diversifying and getting on the rosters at a bunch of different firms. There are pros and cons to doing both as a CAD adjuster, but I would offer this suggestion. In my experience, I would get in really good and build a really strong relationship with one IA firm for CAT. But if you're a daily adjuster and don't want to run CAT, you'll actually need to be running claims for more than one firm in most cases. Make sense? So now that we've got that out of the way, what are firms even looking for on your resume? Here's Dave Kay, president of NACA and founder of 2021training.com on how to build your resume and conduct yourself on social media because they're watching you. But first, are you looking for an IA firm where you're not just another number? Then let me tell you about our friends over at CCMS and Associates. CCMS has been called a big mom and pops firm because they care about their adjusters and they also care about results. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a top-notch, talented adjusting team. If you would like to become a part of the family, email your resume and cover letter directly to careers at ccmsclaims.com. You have to learn and invest in yourself, and that's the thing people forget. They don't want to invest in themselves. What does a professional do? They try to make themselves better. They try to have the answers to the questions. They try to be something that the other guy isn't. You know, so the biggest advice we give people is, number one, this is a business. Do something you love and, and enjoy it. Invest in yourself, because, and I say invest in yourself because it is an investment. And a lot of people ask us, well, I can go to a carrier conference for, or a IA conference for $50. Yes, you can. And you're gonna meet one company. What we've created at NACA is an environment where we've had you know 50 IA firms come to our conference and set up booths and they wanna talk to you. They're looking for adjusters who, you know, like I just described, are holding themselves out as professionals. Know what they're doing, invest in themselves. So it's kind of a, a, a catch 22 in some ways, but the mere fact of you showing up to NACA lets them know that you're willing to invest in, in your career and, and who you are. If you just call them up on the phone and keep saying, hey, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, and you're, you're out on your back porch drinking beer just waiting for the world to come to you, it's not gonna happen. They're gonna take the guy who they saw face to face somewhere, shook their hand, have a th had a 20 minute conversation with, and said, you know what, I remember, I remember John, I remember Sue, I'm, I'm gonna get them on this next deployment. They seem like they could handle themselves and you know, they may not be the, the best adjuster yet, but I think we could work with them. They look like they're willing to learn. As large as this country is, is as big as this insurance industry is, for the independent adjusters, you're gonna run into people over and over and over again. It's a small family, guys. Don't burn bridges, hold yourself professional. If you don't like something, smile, walk away and say, you know what, I'm not gonna be a part of that side, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But to walk away, light the, light the match, burn the bridge and walk away and say, look, these guys are horrific and they're awful and I just blazed out of there and you know, I want the world to know. Don't do it. The way you handle yourself on Facebook. What's one of the first things we do when we meet people? Let's go see what they're saying out there. There's people out there, I look at their posts and I'm like, I'd never hire them if I knew who they were. You know, and all I see is their posts. Your, your perception of your professionalism is laid right out there in black and white. And it's, it's not going away, guys. I mean, <laughs> once you blow up and, and say stuff out there, it's, it's forever there. So think about your professionalism. How do you present yourself online? It's not your fault if you ask a professional question and, and 
people jump on the train and try to make you feel like an idiot and the, the conversation goes into a deep dark well that you're like, wow, I never thought it'd go there. Walk away from the conversation, maintain yourself. We see how you act online. How are you gonna act in front of the customer? When you run enough claims, you'll run into that 1% of people that just had a bad day. They're gonna rail on you in some profound, bizarre way that you're like, wow, I didn't know you could treat a human being like that. They're not treating you as a person like that, they're treating the company. They, they have an issue with the carrier, and you don't know the conversations that always happened before you. I've been on claims that have handed to me where you know they had an adjuster go out and do a less than professional job, end up in a cussing match with the customer, and guess what? Somebody still has to handle the claim. You always see those and your, your heart sinks a little bit, I promise you. If you're a normal person, your, your heart's gonna sink a little bit. I've gotta go clean up somebody else's mess. Don't be a mess maker out there. They always end up okay if you, if you treat them right. You can bring them back around, but it takes a lot more work. Next, you'll hear from the leadership team at the IA firm, CCMS and Associates, about what to bring to the table when applying at an IA firm. But first, as insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by our own insurance. We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs, and mistakes can happen. What are you gonna do when something goes wrong? Kaplikit, CPLIC, or Kaplik for short, is an insurance company for independent adjusters formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. I've seen a lot of resumes where all I've done on my resume is been a catastrophe adjuster only. I've only done cat claims and that's all I want to do is cat claims. It, it's, it's interesting to look at that same person who for the same number of years, six years say, also did cat claims but you can see on the resume where they became exact level training and stability training and they also started their AIC or they went to different levels of training and um, then they started working in different types of claims and you can see that on the resume and you, that's important the resume speaks about you know what you've accomplished so if I'm looking at a resume with someone who's been doing CAT only for six years and someone who's starting to train, getting certifications, you can see they're really trying and this particular person that does CAT didn't do any of that. Well, I'm more interested in the person who's continual learning, right? And, and I think that person has enough curiosity, they might want to learn condos, they might want to learn different things. So that's really... Um, it's exciting to see someone who's doing that for that long that's willing to continue to learn. We, we look for that. Hey, I gotta tell you, the more experience you have in different verticals, that makes you a better adjuster. Uh, if, I like to see an adjuster that, that has an electromechanical background, uh, a little knowledge about uh, uh, construction at the minimum, but he's got an idea of how things operate, how things work, how a house is put together and what type of materials are being used. I, I learned from being an aircraft mechanic, electromechanical, I also had a construction company. You take those two verticals and you throw it into a, and you throw it into a claim process where you have a house with potential electrical mechanical damage or a roofing issue or damaged windows, you can apply those. You can apply from experience. It's just your knowledge base. So if you have somebody that comes to us that maybe used to put kitchens in, for example, just the plumbing or the, the, uh, um, the tiling, you understand how the studs work, how the floor works, how the floor system operates, how the cabinets go on, uh, onto the drywall. You understand that. So your different verticals give you a deeper knowledge of how things are made. And that's important because if you can, it's almost like x-ray vision, right? You can see how it's built. If you see a damaged roof and you've already repaired it or you've already been on one and you've done the work, you get it. So you, these roofers are invaluable when they come with a roofing background and they come to be an adjuster. Those guys are experts, right? I can name, I can name a handful of guys that I'll call up out, out of our team, of our independent team, say, hey, I got a question. I'm calling him because he knows. I don't know everything. I, matter of fact, the more people I know, especially in this industry, the less I, the less I know that I know 
<laughs> you know, there's so much experience out there. So I learn off of everybody else also, but I also recognize their talent. So I'm gonna ask them to say, hey, can you take a look at this for me and give me your opinion on this? I have my own opinion on it, but if you can give me an opinion on this, that means, that means uh, much more than just mine. What would the ideal candidate, you know, show up with? Hopefully a ladder. <laughs> Some measuring devices, right? <laughs> their smartphone and uh, their computer and their knowledge of software. That's, that would be the ideal candidate. Uh, all joking aside, an ideal candidate um, uh, would come armed with, with their thinking cap, uh, obviously, uh, their experience level. Uh, if, you have a, if you have somebody that comes new into the industry and has tried really hard to study about roofing systems, to study about the differences between uh, types of shingles, uh, 20, 25 year, just m the material differences. Um, if you have somebody that has studied that and has tried, they're gonna be more successful. They're gonna be more valuable because they're trying harder. They're intangibles. Wanting to learn is one. Hustle's the other one. So there's a lot of intangibles out there that you can have as with, with new people bringing on. If I can teach you and you comprehend, you're already, you're already way far ahead of everybody who's, who's, who's applied, maybe has a couple years under their belt, but are, are kind of not so much about learning or advancing their knowledge. We are looking for people that first and foremost are self-motivators. Um, we, you, people who are seeking out training on their own. Um, if you're new to the, if you're new to the game, uh, the adjusting world, um, it, it's nice when, when I see on a resume that somebody's already taken the initiative to perhaps they've gotten Xactimate level one certified or they've gone to Vail National to learn, literally learn courses about the insurance industry and the application of their courses in the adjusting world. Those are things that stick out to me. Uh, another thing that really, really stands out for me is somebody who's taken the initiative to partner up with a with an experienced adjuster and, and and have them mentor them and teach them and you know physically go out in the field with somebody to learn how how do I set my ladder up properly so that I, I, I comply with you know my safety um, you know what's the best what, what techniques do you use to scope a loss uh, those are big things people who are self-motivated that shows me that you have a desire and you want to be successful at it people with military experience that's always something that you know is is a plus for me because if you're willing to volunteer to go protect your nation you're a special person to begin with those who who have, possess that, that that desire tend to they want to learn they want to be very good at what they do and they, they have no problem taking direction because they know that in taking direction they're, they're improving themselves and they're improving their abilities to, to manage a task. Stability, which is in today's world that's a little tough sometimes, it's challenging, but to see that you know somebody's been somewhere for a, a couple of years, a few years, that's, that shows me that you know, you've been valued by somebody. Um, that's important. Um, these aren't things that are, you know, all these Check boxes have to be, you know, tick. But these are things that you know I personally like to see when 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 I'm looking at a resume or I'm talking to somebody about a position. There's a wide variety. You know, sometimes it is beneficial to have a uh, an extensive background in property, but we also like to get people who uh, maybe don't have as much experience because we can train them to what, the way that we do it. Uh, we CCMS likes to look at things a little bit different, and our goal is to ultimately get a final resolution a lot of times resolution with the release. Um, and so we like to be able to train that adjuster and let them know how to, how to get to the ultimate solution. Um, so a lot of it is also a conversation. And if we're not having a friendly conversation during an initial interview with a field adjuster, they're probably not gonna have that same kind of conversation with the homeowner or contractor, or public adjuster or an attorney. Um, if you cannot build the rapport, you don't build the trust. And that's a huge part of what we're doing is we have to build the trust with the people that we're working with. A lot of it is about concessions and we may not necessarily agree 100% with the, the need for everything on their estimate. However, there are things that maybe the, um, the insured's representative can agree that they can shave a few things off of their estimate and we can maybe add a few things that we normally wouldn't. However, in order to uh, just fully resolve the, the claim. It's something that everybody can live with. What I look for um, in my review of, of resumes, phone calls, discussions, um, 
personality is obviously huge in this business. Everything we do is customer service based. Um, are you well spoken? Do you communicate well? Are you respectful? Obviously, experience is great. That's not the only thing though. Um, there are a lot of adjusters out there that may be just getting started, maybe only have a year experience. Um, if you're willing to learn, a lot of people are sponges and can take it in. We have a phenomenal claims team here that I trust can teach some of the lesser experienced people um, how we need to do things based on our client instructions. I try to avoid people that look like have hopped around a lot. That's, that's a biggie for me and that's pretty much in any profession. Cat adjusters are different. You know, they'll, they'll take multiple jobs, um, so you'll see that a lot. But if you see somebody that their resume lists 12 different IA firms and it's, you know, 2018 to present, it's kind of, kind of a red flag that you're working for that many firms. Um, those are really kind of the biggies for me. Yeah, I mean, certifications are, are always a plus. It's, it's not a criteria that me personally, I'm like, oh, they have to have this. But it, it's, I associate it with like a college degree. It shows your dedication to the industry, shows you're willing to go above and beyond and learn new things um, and not just hop roofs every day. And, and it definitely can set you apart from other applicants. It's, it's tricky. Um, we actually, Bill and I just discussed this yesterday. We were talking about adjusters and specific clients and with the range that we have, it's a huge difference. Um, you have some carriers that are very time oriented, you know, you're on the clock from the second you get it. You got others like the complex losses. They're maybe not on the clock quite as much because they are complex. Education wise, adjusters have got to educate themselves on who they're working with, make sure they know um, mistakes are going to happen. The, the most important part is let's learn from it, figure out what happened, why it happened, and how do you prevent it from happening again. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself, Chris Stanley, Guy Grant, and others will show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know that it's hard to find a working adjuster who will let you shadow them, which is why we let you ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at adjustertvplus.com. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims a career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.